again to another episode of the Short Shoot Show. This is episode 10. That means we're in double figures and on this podcast, if you haven't heard it before, we talk about everything in the world of triathlon and everything in the world of triathlon at the moment, forgetting Iron Man, don't worry about that, is about Super League Triathlon. What a race we had in London to open the richest month in short course racing. The sun was out, there was tons of fans and it was the return of championship racing and that is what we are all here for. And now the dust has settled, we'll analyse, we've cut Chris McCormack because we heard much too much of him on the commentary and instead Tim Don and Annie Emerson, team captains of the Cheetahs and of the Eagles are here and first of all, what did you guys think? How did we enjoy it? There's the Eagles hat, we'll start with you Tim uh, because the Eagles dominated and you obviously had a fantastic weekend. Oh, I had a, I loved it. It's the first Super League I've ever been to live, and um, oh, it's 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 all happening. It's non-stop. Um, yeah, I think you know from the the women's start to the finish of the men's race, it was just full gas the whole way. And um, yeah, it was it was I was so lucky to have a front row seat. Um, yeah, the racing was yeah was was brilliant. What about you, Annie? The cheaters didn't didn't dominate in the same way, but nevertheless, uh, you were right down there and mixing it up and doing the interviews down on the ground. How did you enjoy it? It was a beautiful day and, and great racing. Listen, we were consistent. We we were the only team to have top three men in top t- the top ten and three women in the top ten. So we're all about consistency. You know, this is a long road. We got three big big races coming up now. That was just the warm up. So just watch out for the cheetahs, okay? But um, uh, <laughs> but seriously though, what a display of triathlon! Abs- you know that's what we want to see. This super fast racing, it's unpredictable. The positions are changing all the time. I think what stood out is the guys that um, we're going to be looking at perhaps towards the end of the series on top of the podium. You can't look much further. We'll talk about it in a minute. But obviously, Jess, Vincent, George Taylor Brown, uh, Johnny Brownlee, Hayden Wild, uh, absolutely outstanding performances. But I think for a lot of guys there, it was their debut tie or debut race on, on Super League. And I think that we'll see people pick up as they learn the tricks of the trade. You know, we saw so many different things happening with people with, you know, swim hats on under their helmets. Um, but the venue, what a venue. It's been one of the richest cafes. Um, in the world and you know what Super League did in a really small space just put on the most exciting unpredictable fast racing that I've ever seen yeah it was it was unpredictable in a lot of ways but the cream did rise to the top and let's start with the women's race that was the first one uh, kicked off just after 11 30 local time uh, on Sunday and early doors Georgia Taylor Brown smashed it out of the park it was an all British top five uh, to finish stage one and Georgia just looked supreme early and obviously she had a crash in stage two and we'll get to that but she didn't look the same after that but there was this one shot I remember of her and her she's got this beautiful running style the, the same kind of run that you, we saw when she ran away to a world championship title she just ran away from everyone there early and at that stage Tim I guess it looked like this was going to be Georgia's day. Oh, Georgia was the strongest athlete out there, um, you know, swimming, biking and running. You know, she was always top three out the water. As you said, on the run, you know, whether it's the, the, the first kilometre or the last kilometre of a 10K, she looks so compact, so so in control. Um, yeah, she's she's probably probably thinking, no, I'm not. She's probably like a like a swan. You know, we just see this graceful animal, you know, floating past and the leg, you know, the, but what we don't see, you know, everything that goes into that. But on the bike, again, she was riding, you know, the pack would catch her and she'd float off the front. Well, I don't know if that was even an accident. Um, so, yeah, she was in great form. But you've got to put it all together. You swim, you bike, you run, you transitions, and you need that little bit of lady luck. And unfortunately, you know, that, that spill cost her seconds. So when we came down to the last race, um, yeah, that was the difference between the W and second. Yeah, it was. But you had you did have three eagles in the top six in that women's race, and you absolutely smashed it. And you robbed that. You robbed the ten points early through Victoria Lopez. Tactics. So, All about tactics. And that as well. Did you tell her to do that because she was completely gassed? Yeah, she was totally gassed after. So did 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 you just send her out there to, to do that she and pick up those five and five for the team? No, I didn't. But um, you know, she leads from the front, and yes, <laughs> um, you know, Jess knows she's a good swimmer. She's good feet to get on. And we started on the outside, on the inside, which is the worst spot in um, West India Key to start from. But those two women got out there hard. 
Um, and it was important, I think, for her confidence. She wasn't wasn't sure if she still doesn't think she belongs on this world stage at the front. And, you know, I think after that first race, she definitely believes that. Um, yeah, she, she she struggled a little bit on the run, but her run form is going to be coming. But, yeah, I mean, it's 10 points in the bag and it was the short shoot. So if she couldn't use them, no one else could. And again, if Georgia had got that, um, you know, she could have won the race. So um, I'm not saying it was a master plan, but it definitely worked out. Yeah, claim it, claim it in retrospect. Well, Georgia, as we said, took a six-second advantage in, in the first stage there from Potter, Holland, Learmonth and Stanford, uh, all all top five uh, GB on the streets of London, and they continue to dominate throughout the day. Already the 90-second rule, rule was looming for Simone Ackerman. Gillian Sanders were over a minute back, so the pace was right on there in stage one. But that evaporated, as we said, for Georgia in stage two when she um, made a mistake unclipping. Um, and it was Jess and, and Katie Zafiris, along with Leone Perio and Vicky Holland, who who set the pace. And uh, that was an interesting one, Annie, because Katie was nowhere in the first stage, and then she came rocketing back in the second stage. And there was the Katie Zafiris we all know and love. But um, she she was she had a very slow start. Yeah, I mean, I love I love Katie Zafiris. I'm a big fan of hers. I think you know she is the consummate professional. You know world champion, you know, the bronze medal at the Olympics. Um, don't forget she raced in the Collins Cup the week before, first long distance race that she's ever done. Uh, you know, perhaps not the be best prep for London. I think we'll see a lot more of Katie um, as the next three weeks turn over. Um, and, and she never gives up. You know what, th there are a lot of athletes that you can see mentally get a bit frazzled and they can't bring themselves back into the race, even if they are potentially capable. But Katie never, ever gives up. And, you know, she loves Super League racing. And, and I think, you know, having chatted to her afterwards, you know, she was, um, she was fairly philosophical about it. I don't think she expected to go out out there and you know stomp it and win on the first day but I think she said you know what I'm just warming into this so I think we, we need to watch out for Katie definitely in the next round. Yeah she missed the uh, points on offer early for the Rhinos and the Rhinos are languishing uh, in last position on the points table but meanwhile Vicky Holland looked very good inspired choice there from Tim uh, to pick up a third uh, he, she's an eagle, isn't she? Yeah, let's pick up a third. She, she looked very strong. Yeah uh, you know she's so experienced um, you know it, in all honesty, she won't mind me saying this. I spoke to her last Monday and she was a bit under the weather. I think she was commentating at the Collins Cup and I think that took it, took it out of her, um, you know, just being on air for, for so long, doing an amazing job. So, you know, even on Wednesday, she wasn't 100 percent. But she, you know, she had the training in her legs um, leading up to the Olympics. And she's a racer. She's a, she's, she, she ain't going to give up. She's going to be going, you know, to the line. And that second race you know, that set her up for that third race. So she could go off with um, Jess on the bike and they worked really well. And, you know, I think she she grew in confidence, um, you know, throughout the races. And I think that's what, what we see with the women is, you know, that's why Katie was a bit of a, she was an anomaly. She lost 17 seconds in that first swim. That's insane. That's, you know, and yet that didn't phase her because the next two races, she was right up there. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, she was a bit like, whoa, this is, you know, I, you know, sure she can sit on Lucy Charles's feet, but this is, this is even quicker. Yeah. <laughs> there's not much, there's not much quicker swimming in the city on Lucy Charles's feet, but it wasn't two Ks, it was just 300 metres. But in the end, and, and it was in the swim as well, that Jess Learmonth in stage three really uh, put the screws to everybody else. She was just too strong across the three disciplines, just like she was uh, in the arena games last time out for Super League. And uh, she never looked back from there. So, I guess the question is, is she the series favourite now, Jess Learmonth? Because she's basically won the only two Super League events that she's ever been in. Um, and she just looks so strong across it all. So, Annie, do you think she's, is she number one? Or is there still too many cards to be played uh, between now and when we arrive in Malibu in a few weeks' time? Well... <sighs> Uh, I, I think it's really hard to bet against her. I, I mean, she looked absolutely awesome. This is her style of racing, without a doubt. And, and I was sort of thinking over things this morning, thinking, you know, Super League does, you know, favour a good swimmer, uh, you know, I think. I mean, you know, you've got to be good all round in triathlon. You don't win if you're bad at one of them, that's for sure. But I think, you know, it does, this style of racing is so, so good for Jess. We see her absolutely at her best. But you pointed out that um, Georgia Taylor-Brown after that crash wasn't quite the same again. And seeing her after the race, she, she definitely had some nasty cuts and the, the, the suit was broken. She, she had a lot of road rash and stuff. It was her mistake. 
Um, I think there are plenty of other places on the courses where they might have come down, not on the straight, coming into transition, and she'll be kicking herself for that. I think she lost quite a bit of confidence. And you do, you come off and you're like, oh, you know what, God, that bloody hurt. And then you get a bit more cagey on the bike. Um, but I think Georgia Taylor-Brown and Jess Learmont are the two that are going to be the ones to be. Yeah, certainly for for the British fans, they'll be enjoying hearing that. We'll see if Cardi Zafiris can rock it back into contention as well. Uh, now, we did we got the predictions from our, our partners uh, in data sports forecast um, before this race, and so I want to look now at some predicted efforts efforts uh, versus some actual efforts. And overall, uh, when you take in, you can possibly pick up a total of thirty points uh, across. The whole race. If you pick up all five swim points, swim uh, bike points, and run points, and then win the overall, so nobody did that. Hayden Wild picked up the most points out of anybody um, at twenty-five, so that's not too bad at all. Um, but overall, sports forecasts were only out for about an average of maybe three and a half uh, points across every single athlete that they they nailed it down based on all their past results and even with COVID thrown in. So that's a, a pretty good effort. Um, but there were some there were some anomalies. Uh, and I think the biggest one there, when we looked at predicted efforts, predicted finishing, predicted um, points picked up across the disciplines versus not, the biggest underperformer by far was Cassandra Bogrant. Um, she was slated to pick up 20 points across the individual and the disciplines, uh, but she came away with six points. Didn't win it, didn't pick up any points in any discipline, uh, and she finished in 10th place overall. So what is going on with Cassandra Bogrant? I saw her um, Instagram afterwards. She just put up a picture of her in a heap at the end and going out oh, next time. What was the, what was the problem? Was there a problem or was she just off the pace, Tim? What do you think? You know, I think she was just off the pace and I think everything's magnified in super league, you know, in an Olympic distance, uh, you know, you, if you're that much off the pace, you still, you, you could still run your way into it or bite your way into it. But here you snooze, you lose, you know, I'm um, sure didn't have the greatest Olympic games for her. And, you know, we could see even in the team relay, you know, we were, we've talked about, you know, the French selection of she went um, third, not first, which we all thought was a mistake. Um, but, I, yeah, I just don't think she's been been herself. I know she went on holiday after the Olympics to the Greek islands. She came back to the French Grand Prix and smashed it out of the park. But this is the next level. And, um, you know, there were women that had obviously done amazing at the Olympics that were carrying on that form. But then also someone like Vicky Holland, who in by her standards, are bronze medalists from... Uh, Rio, she didn't have the greatest Olympics. She didn't get selected for the team relay, yet she comes out fighting and kicking and screaming and, and gets up on the podium. So, you know, I think she she just looked like she didn't have that spark in her eyes. She just didn't look that didn't look like I'm not saying she it's not that she didn't want it, but you gotta fight fight for every position. I mean, God, you've seen the photos of them getting out of the water. It's like a pack of lions or lionesses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know what you think, Tim, but you know, she is one of the best swimmers in the sport. Maka said it, you know, for her to be that far off doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I I don't think, you know, maybe I'm speaking out of terms here and she'd have something else to say about it, but I don't think it's physiological with her. I think it's psychological because I don't believe that you can be that great a swimmer, a swimmer and dominate, you know, in a French Grand Prix. Okay, maybe she's tired. There are lots of factors. And like, like we were saying, you only have to be a few seconds out. But she was way down on that first swim. And you're absolutely right. The girls that are putting in the effort really look like they're putting in the effort. And I think Cassandra Bogram, for me, from a, a engine point of view, has the most amazing engine. You know, we've seen it before previously. Not that often, but we've seen it in Super League for sure and in a few World Triathlon Series races. But I think she needs to sort out her head. And maybe I'm speaking out of term. I, I hope she's not kind of like listening to this and kind of going, but, you know, th there's just something quite not, not, you know, computing in her brain right now when it comes to racing. I mean, her second and third swim were were comparable to, you know, Jess, Georgia, Vicky, you know, and Katie. But yeah, it's just that first swim. And again, they've got two minutes from when the winner crosses the line. So she was like a handful of seconds behind. Some of the women weren't on the start line to start the second race because they physically didn't have enough time to turn their bike around, set their shoes up, put their put their goggles and hat, you know, have a drink. Because there were, um, I think there was a, an agreement, there were no bottles on the bike because it was very bumpy on the cobbles and we were worried about crashes. So, you know, she didn't have time to recompose herself, close her eyes, maybe just go... Let's go again. It was like, you know, the, the kind of like 
how you started that first race, you carried through definitely to the second race. You couldn't reset. And she had a tough, tough run out there. And, you know, yeah, maybe she wasn't, you know, but she's got time to turn it around. We've got three races, um, you know, two more in Europe. So she's probably gone home to Montpellier. You know, she can, you know, relax, do some training and get that confidence up. Because when you break it down, she's not that far off the pace. She was, I think she was less than a minute. She was 10th and she was less over 50 minutes of racing, less than a minute. And we're saying, oh, she had a terrible race. You know, she's got to, got to try and take the positives from the negative that she can turn it around. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's 100% correct. But I mean, it, I wouldn't be like if she doesn't if she performs like that in the next three weeks we will be talking about it and if we are talking about it we'll probably be talking about the fact that she doesn't seem like she wants it enough because it, we all can agree that she's got every physical attribute she needs to dominate if she wants to do it on the day and everyone has a flat spot but yeah we've got three more races to go and no doubt we'll see her like for example she's won in Jersey before you know it's it, when the when the stars align and, and and that's what it is it's a game of inches this one because it's so fast and so furious if you're five percent off your game you can get shown up really badly so uh there's a couple of other names there that we we didn't talk that much about to be honest and and like non-stanford was fifth in the first day she dropped right back rachel clammer not a usual self she finished 12th overall i i didn't cite her at all during the telecast basically mm-hmm. and maya king was another one who finished ninth but these are these are, are women who we probably predicted might finish a little bit higher up and do we think that there's you know out of those three names who who do we see roaring back I guess in Munich is it is it is, it's probably for me it's probably a Maya Kingler but I, I don't know Rachel Klammer hasn't hasn't been quite on the pace in recent months she's had plenty going on I think yeah I've, Tim uh, oh sorry is that Maka that's my phone is it Maka who is it? My phone, carry on. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's back and going. That's back and going. When when's uh, when's the podcast going to record? <laughs> I can't get into that. <laughs> um, I got stung by a scorpion. <laughs> um, no, I'm for, um, I've been, oh, we all follow everyone. Um, I, Rachel was happy with her performance. Um, yeah, she said she was happy with tenth, and I think you know that's where she's going to finish. And you know she's not going to she's not going to jump up. I don't think. Um, you know, since the Olymp- she's had so much going on, I think you know she's she's enjoying the enjoying the racing and she's given a hundred percent. But she's not she doesn't have that edge. You know, I don't think she would have prepared um, you know as as diligently as she has done in the past, where we've really seen her. You know, normally that that second race starting with a run, she's right up there and she can sit on the feet like a champ when there's no fighting, which is crucial. And then you know that sets her up to start closer to the front on the third race. So. You know, I definitely don't think we're going to see Rachel move up. Kingma on the bike, oof, when she was on the front, she was the fastest through transition, hitting those cobbles. She was committed 100%. I just think it was a shock. She hasn't done the kind of racing at this level with this confidence in this position. I definitely think come Munich, we're really going to see her, you know, attack that first bike. And it wouldn't surprise me if she got the bike jersey, or sorry, got the quickest individual time trial. Um, you know, and again, with her, it's, a, it's not just a confidence thing, it's a learning thing. Um, so I definitely think we're going to see her, her jump up there as well. Annie, what about you? Any names you want to pull out? Well, I, I think that I, I might slightly disagree with Tim on Rachel. I, I agree. I think she has had, you know, she's had a tough season. She had, a, she had a great Olympics and she was very happy with that. She's had all the stuff with Richard to deal with, family issues. That was last year, but it hasn't been easy for her the last 18 months. And so I think hopefully the Olympics really gave her something back. And she said to me, she said, oh, I'm tired, you know, and they're thinking about Super League and getting through these races. And then, of course, um, you know, World Triathlon have just decided to put on these 2022 races um, later on. So the athletes are looking to go until November. So I think Rachel just needs to maybe turn her head around. And if she can refresh that, we'll see more of her. In terms of Maya Kingma, I have never seen an athlete that, that mentally is so focused and thinking about every single little detail, how she can get better. Um, she's got the confidence over the longer stuff. And I think you're right that it was a bit of a shock to the system. But you can bet your bottom dollar she went away and analysed every part of that race, her race, and how she can improve it. You know, she looked a little bit heavy and, and tired on the runs. But as you said, biking, oh, she's awesome. And she's got a much better swim than, than what we, we just saw. So I think, you know, I mean, I'm not just saying it because she is one of my athletes, but um, I, I'd be really surprised if we don't see quite a bit more from her in the next few races. She'll be tucked in behind the Eagles quite nicely. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, speaking of the Eagles, right? So, uh, sports forecast predicted that overall the Eagles in the in the women's racing would get twenty nine point nine points, and you picked up a cheeky thirty eight. I think a lot of people know Victoria Lopez picking up those two uh, bike and swim jerseys, uh, and the Cheetahs predicted twenty three point one, got twenty six. So you both overperformed. <laughs> And conversely, the Rhinos and the Scorpions significantly underperformed and the Sharks were as shit as we knew they would be uh, in the women's. Up to their name. It's, it's true. It's true. They, got, they were, they were uh, predicted to get 15.1. I think they pushed themselves really hard and they got 15.2. So good on you, Sharks. It was a different story in the men's, but in the women's it was a struggle. Um, let's talk about the men's though right now. And how about the Falcon, Hayden Wild? Just but like for me, one of the probably the most impressive performance I've seen from him, uh, riding and then running his way back to Johnny Brownlee and Vincent Lewis. And I just think that that of all the times that anyone's deserved a victory and worked hard for it, Hayden Wild, uh, he did the most hard work. And Annie, that was that was that was some impressive stuff. Oh my, listen. What a guy. Oh, my God. He's absolutely on fire. He's got a bronze Olympic medal. He's 23. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and he's loving, loving what he's doing. Oh, my God, is he good. His swim impressed me. Um, I'd just like to say that I think he was quite lucky to have the short shoot because it was great to see Vince back after a really really hard 2021 and he had the bit between his teeth and I think if Hayden hadn't had that short shoot it might have been a bit tricky but how he ran himself back up to to Vince and Johnny was really seriously impressive love that guy he's going all the way yeah what about you Tim I mean where where do you put that in terms of performances no I disagree with some of that I don't think luck had anything to do with that I was at the transition exit in the second, in the first race, and he was first off the bike by about 30 meters, and he was first over that mount line, and he went, yes, not because he was leading, it meant yeah. nothing, but he got, he knew, that was his tactic, he got that, and he was like, yeah, and he actually went, yes, and I don't think the other guys were like, oh, shit, because you know, that's it. That's the, you know, Hauser got the short shoot, but he was falling backwards and he had a mechanical. So that, that was unfortunate, but no Hayden, he wasn't just, he wasn't physically firing on all cylinders. He had a game plan and he was putting himself into it. And I think he wasn't content to sit in a pack. He wasn't just going to ride around and, you know, he, he was like to win this race, I need to be at the front. And to do that, I have to put myself at the front. He was maybe, maybe he'd been talking to the Norwegians who, you know they they don't they don't just hang back they create chances by by working hard but tim do do you, i mean i'm i'm not i'm all of it, the whole race the whole day for hayden he was absolutely brilliant and i saw exactly what you mean when he came over the finish over the the where was it the from the mount line swim to run run wherever yeah. where he picked up the sh- where he picked up the short shoot and and you know the fact that he thought about this and it was you know he pre-thought this I mean it was absolutely amazing to watch but I think I'm just talking about coming right down to the finish and I think that if he hadn't had the short shoot I think Vince would have out sprinted him that's my personal opinion but anyway well let, hey let hopefully we well, I think you're right I mean Vince was catching him yeah but when you've got the lead um, you know, you, you, you're you aware of someone's on your shoulder, which they weren't. Um, yeah, look, let's hope we have a short, uh, let's hope we have a sprint finish again. But if he keeps on racing like that, there's going to be no sprint because he's tactically going to outdo him every time. Even in the first race, he made sure he won it just to get that extra second on. I mean, Velasco's in his bloody team and they were looking at each other and you could kind of almost see Hayden go, whoa, 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 I'm the alpha man. And Velasco's such a nice fella. He was like, yep, yep, no worries. And I'm like, dude, Get in there. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I think Vince Vince got lucky in transition. He did cut transition twice that we saw um, from the bike to the swim, but the referee wasn't wasn't present. Um, not that that would have affected things. But um, yeah, hey, we love watching Vince race and, you know, he does what he does best and that's lead from the front. And he's definitely, he's, he's, that confidence is brewing. And man, if he rolls that snowball, it's going to be unstoppable come Malibu. Yeah, you, you almost get the feeling that Vince might have gone up to them beforehand and gone, hey, if I go down this way, is that going to be a problem? Like, that, that seems the kind of a Vince Lewis thing to do. 
um, because it, obviously you can put together swim, bike, run and transition. But when you think tactically like that, like Hayden mm-hmm. did and like Vince does, that's what puts you at the top on a consistent basis. And uh, I think, yeah, it's probably not luck when you when you, you plan your race out far enough ahead to go, if I am in a sprint finish with Vincent Lewis, I'm going to need a short shoot. So I'm going to do everything mm-hmm. I can and burn a couple of extra matches here to get it. So I've got it in my back pocket. And I think... That really show, I mean, that showed Vince up a little bit, you know, and he would have planned that out for minutes in advance to go, I need to make sure I've got that that gap so I've got time to get over that line. So that's exactly why we want the short shoot to be part of it. So uh, outstanding, as you said, unfortunate for Matty Hauser because we haven't seen much of him on international racing circuits for the last couple of years. He's been stuck down in Australia <laughs> with me. Not not exactly did, with, with, with me. We're not roommates or anything, but he's been in the same But wasn't country. it Father's Day at the weekend? Um, I thought you are allowed to fly private jet anywhere in Australia to visit your your dad. Wasn't that the rule? No? Uh, or is that, that, that's just for the elite the class. Prime Minister. <laughs> well, what's yeah, that about? Yeah. Prime Minister can do that, and he can lock the rest of us up. But he can take a four thousand dollars taxpayer trip to uh, to Sydney to see his dad. At least we've got Boris. And I Boris couldn't see my dad that. anyway. <laughs> no, 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 none of our. Oh lot. yeah, no, <laughs> Boris is legit. I was, this is the first and last time we stray into politics on the short shoot. So I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's let's get back to Matty Hauser. Unfortunate for him, but he, you know, he's a guy who's so good at mixed team relay. Holds the fastest splits in history. So we'll see him back uh, again, having another crack uh, after that great swim he had early. Kenji Nina, I want to give him a shout out. And Seth Ryder as well, who uh, came in a bit late, continued their early form with a fifth and sixth uh, in that opening stage. And second stage, as you said, Vince was back on top. Um, and then you just got a feeling then that that's, what how, that's how it was going to go, that Vince was going to take the reins and, and not let go of them. And Hayden dropped eight seconds in that stage and there were a ton of people eliminated. So... That second stage, the pressure was really right on uh, and Vince and Johnny Brownlee were starting to take it by the scruff of the neck, weren't they? And it was, it was great to watch that too because they're the two, the, the two biggest names, if you like. Uh, it was good to watch them duke it out in that second stage, Annie. Oh, really good. You know, um, we're looking at, you know, two athletes that have been around a while and, and are the older guys in the field. Um, I mean, it's all relative. They're still bloody young. But um, it, w- it was really good to see that from both of them. I'm happy really happy for for Vince because he's not on my team he's not a Brit but you know you can really respect talent and and you know an athlete as awesome as him and Johnny Brownlee as well you know back with the fire in his belly loves Super League racing so really good to see him back and you know it's going to be hard to look beyond Vince and Johnny they they work well together I think Johnny's going to have a tough yeah. time getting the better of Vince because you know Vince has just got that top end speed that so many of the other athletes you know don't have you know come the end of a stage or, or a race so um Johnny but he's on great form you know maybe he's going to go away tactically you know and have a little chat with himself work out what he can do to get the better of Vince but just great to see those two guys back on top you know we know Vince has got that killer finish but also it's his swim if he touches the water, no one's going round him. He is the fastest open water swimmer in the Super League. I would even go mano a mano, put him ahead mm. of Matt Hauser. And Johnny's on his feet. That's brilliant. Yeah. But he's not going to be able to go round him. Well, if Vince is on Johnny's feet, he is yeah. going to go round Johnny. And that's no mean feat because he's world class. Mm. So, yeah, he's got the, yeah. the sprint finish, but he's also got the gas in the in the swim. And that the, the second race, when the swim's not first, oh, my days, that's where the other swimmer, that's where the other athletes lost loads of time because, you know, and Johnny was, I'm not saying lucky, but yeah. he was yeah. glued to his feet, probably hanging on for, for dear life. Yeah, stage three in the end, it was, as we said, so, Hayden Wild, Lewis Brownlee, Velasquez hung on for fourth, um, Alex Yee, Seth Ryder. Uh, Bert Whistle and Shachar Sagiv, our first Israeli, had a pretty good showing. I would, I would like to give him a, a, a big up. But who's your takeaway performance, both of you, apart from Hayden Wild? Who, who, who was your performer on the day outside of Hayden? Uh, obviously, Vince, Vince and Johnny did what Vince and Johnny do. But is there someone you want to pull out and go, you know, I was really impressed with, with, with him or her even, if we want to take a, one away from the women's race, so not to put you on the spot, but... Is there someone you thought, yeah, good addition or had a particularly good day, Tim? I think in the men's side, Vasco, I mean, he's been quiet for the last, mm. you know, six, seven weeks just going about his business because he, he, he wasn't in um, Tokyo. 
Um, so for him to come back and um, it also was noted the first race, the men wore wetsuits and the women didn't. He was the only athlete not to wear a wetsuit and he still got out top five, top six. Um, he was running powerfully. So, um, sorry. Um, yeah, no, him and Seth Ryder, you know, late call up, you know, getting six. That last leg, he sacrificed his run um, for Alex. He did, you know, of the three of the four laps on the bike, he sat on the front for three of them. So Alex could rest and, you know, gave him a shot at trying to run up. So, you know, they were they were even then talking, playing team tactics on the women. I know she's an Olympic medalist, Vicky Holland, you know. She's got so many amazing British women who are just like killing it, you know, from Leeds, from um, Montreal, um, Edmonton and obviously Tokyo. You know, um, you know, she's definitely the senior of the athletes and the more experienced. And I think that showed. And I think, um, yeah, she's only going to grow in confidence, you know, from from that first race. Annie, anyone left over? <laughs> um, to, just to reiterate what you said about Vicky, I was. I, I was really impressed with her too because, you know, she's such a great athlete. I mean, bloody hell, she's got an Olympic bronze medal, but I I didn't think she'd like this course um, on the bike. Um, and, and the fact that she's been sick, I mean, you could hear it in her voice. You know, she's had a really bad cold. And, oh, well, yeah, very impressed with Vicky Holland. Um, in, in the men's, um, and and I'd like to mention Sophie Colwell as well, because I think she was really solid. She said herself that after um, the first leg, she was like, oh, my, you know, it hurt her a lot, and she kind of warmed into it. So I think, actually, um, Sophie really consistent right across the board, just missing that top end, but a really good performance um, from from uh, Sophie. And, and also... Um, Fabian, um, Alessandro Fabian, mm. um, you know, he, he's known as a, as a decent swimmer in the sport and, and he rides the bike well, but I think he, you know, he really stepped up to the task, you know, so he was, he's sitting in ninth overall um, and he really enjoyed it. Um, and I think we'll see a little, a little bit more from him. You know, he's a tall guy, you know, he's a big guy, so that doesn't always lend itself to Super League racing. Um, but yeah, I think I think we're going to see a little bit more of Alessandro as well. I'm impressed with his performance in London. Absolutely. Well, um, now we head off to Munich, and um, what can we expect? It's a completely different setup in terms of all the different formats. This is the one that's going to mix up the order the most, uh, the equaliser, and that's why they call it the equaliser. So this time it's a bike equaliser. So we're going to have a bike TT, uh, and then in a pursuit start, a swim bike run, swim bike run. Uh, so like a mini enduro, uh, non-stop over the over the standard distances, um, but you're going to be paying for that time you've lost um, in that equaliser. So it obviously plays very much into the hands of the big bikers. So we've got a more flowing course in Munich as well. It's probably not as technical. Probably a lot smoother as well. I haven't seen I haven't seen the um, the road surface, but it, you know it's got hell. It's um oh there's a bit of there's a bit of it's a bit of hill in it because uh, I haven't actually seen it because I'm stuck here in Australia. So, so obviously with a with a TT, and then what do you think? Yeah, I've sent my German crew to check it out. Go on, do a, do a course reconnaissance. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think no yeah. one's taking this more seriously than you. <laughs> hey, not for me. It's for the athletes, man. I want them to get that extra payday. Um, <laughs> They yeah, it's more flow. The corners are wider and smoother. Um, there's a little hill. Um, the other thing that's interesting is there's a long or a longer run up from transit from the swim to transition, and again that's slightly uphill. Um, but two and a half k, you know, that individual time chart, all about the warm up. They've literally got to have their heart rate at one fifty before the race starts, so they can just access, you know, megawatts from the gun. It's, you can't warm into that. You, you and they've got to know the course, so I hope they get a good chance to ride the course you know, a few times the day before. Um, but yeah, the course looks phenomenal. Tight, compact, um, iconic venue. Um, yeah, let's just hope the sun's shining because it's forecast 80% uh, rain, thunderstorms at the moment. You really have done your research. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> so so who do we who do we like in this, in the, in the women's and in the men's, given that we're going to have a bike? So it's a, a two and a half K bike TT, pay for all time lost. Uh, in a swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. And it's, there's not a lot of time in between those two either. So um, who who does that favour in the women's and the men's? Who do you want to pull out as as, as ones to watch in this format, Annie? Um, well, I think, I mean, okay, without a doubt, we're going to see um, Jess and Georgia up there on the bike, absolutely. 
But I think Maya and Safiris are going to be, Maya King and Katie Safiris are going to be the next two athletes. You know, we know how well um, Katie Safiris is capable, capable of riding the bike. Um, and Maya Kingma is, uh, she, she'll be on fire. I'd be really surprised if she's kind of not, not top three on, on the bike times. Um, and then in, in the men's, um, you know, will it be Jacob Wertwistle's ch chance to shine a little bit? You know, previously he's, you know, He's been awesome on the bike, you know, um, on, on the world triathlon circuit. You know, he's always one of those guys really influential in, in bringing up the pack, really strong. Um, and Schumberg, hopefully, um, he's feeling a li little bit better. We know he's been really poorly at shingles, and that's why we didn't see him um, in great form. But if he's got a bit of a chance to recover. So so just kind of looking down rather than the obvious ones, I think, you know, we'll expect to see Bert Whistle and um, Schumberg up there as well, if, if he's well. Yeah, I think, um, uh, you know, Manny Howes is going to have something to prove after his mechanic. I mean, he got a puncher. He was looking strong in that first race. I mean, he had a great swim, great transition, got the short shoot. And then he was just he was just still off the front with the boys really working. So if he can ride like that. But if anyone overcommits to a corner, they're going to lose like 40 seconds. Um, so they've got to know the course. And, you know, we know Maya is strong, but I think her strength is a technical ability. I mean, going back to Yokohama, Taylor Nib said, oh my gosh, in the corners, out the corners, I just couldn't sit with her on the straight. It was the other way around. And, you know, so if she can, you know, if, if she's, you know, as I said, she looked committed here. Seth Ride is riding real well. And I think he's a young guy, you know, coming off the back of a fourth in the grand final. And then, you know, he wouldn't have thought he was, you know, he only got called up 10 days ago and he's running six. He's riding really well. Um, but it's going to be tight. I mean, you know, we're probably talking, you know, 20, 20 women or 21 women and 21 men. There's probably going to be 20 seconds, 30 seconds maximum between them. And then where those gaps are, that's going to be the interesting part for, for the start of the second race. If you're with a group on your own, can you bridge across, you know, etc. So, yeah, I think it's going to be, yeah, fast, fast TT. <laughs> yeah, it was um it just takes me back. And the last time we had a bike equaliser was yeah. Hamilton Island, uh, the very first one where Alistair Brownlee absolutely blew a gasket on that one and then absolutely got pumped in the race too. And it was <laughs> just like one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. But it was up a 12% gradient hill. So it's not going to be as bad as that on this one. Uh, probably not going to be 180% humidity either like it was there. But um, it's going to be fantastic to watch. There is no doubt about it. 2 p.m. local time in Munich, which is the middle of the night for me again. Uh, but for everyone else, it'll be a lovely time to watch a little bit of triathlon. You can watch it on superleaguetriathlon.com. You can watch it on the YouTube channel. Go and sign up so you can get the alerts when it comes on. And, of course, wherever you are around the world, there's a ton of terrestrial networks and streaming services taking it, so make sure you look out for that. The full list is on the website. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you very much, Annie, for looking back at that one and looking forward to Munich. We'll check in again uh, on the weekend, and we'll see you for another Short Shoot Show next week. Go to Eagles. Go the cheetah. <laughs> <laughs>